Welcome to Foundation Repair Marketing Secrets, the podcast that's rocking the foundation repair industry. Discover how to boost your leads, raise your profits, and lift your digital presence. Together, let's dig deep and transform your foundation repair business. Alrighty, awesome. We have Josh today from a very, very snowy place. <laughs> Welcome, Josh. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm in Florida if if the shirt doesn't give it away. So I respect your ability to deal with the cold and the snow. Um, I was going to say I'm a little cold down here today, but I can't rub it in like that. <laughs> yeah, I think we're maybe a high at 10 degrees today, five right oh now. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. How does that affect the business? I know you guys, you know, you're not just focused in your backyard, but um, does that make it very difficult in the line of work that you guys do? Yeah. Yes. Uh, absolutely. Weather weather plays a big part in in what we do. We've got. I mean, we we are uh, focused on commercial deep foundation systems nationwide. So we're going from coast to coast. So you know, um, we weren't always that way. Uh, so just in the last twelve months, we've really expanded uh, where we you know where our service area from from a uh, four state area of just Iowa, Nebraska, uh, Kansas and Missouri. Uh, we've we've uh, we've we've definitely expanded that and and that has allowed us uh, to to find uh, find uh, jobs that maybe aren't affected by by you know the the polar vortex that we're dealing with right <laughs> right now. But uh, regardless, it's it's certainly pushing jobs that we for next week already that we thought hey, they're, they're going to be ready for us, uh, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, now it's looking like the following week. So uh, so definitely, definitely dealing with with issues when it comes to snow. But, you know, we're, whether it's rain or, or uh, uh, you know, any form of precipitation that that definitely pushes pushes out our schedule. So, right. Yeah, it's funny the precipitation mentioned because so many people in foundation waterproofing, especially when they're doing residential or commercial, obviously uh, they love, it's like a rain dance. I've had clients say, like, bring it on. Um, but obviously that has its difficulties too when it's actively raining, you know, good luck properly doing OSHA structure, digging ditches and putting guys in there and then putting some piers in the ground. That's, that's it's kind of a weird it's a great thing you need the rain but also boy does it make it tough to do the work yeah yep and, and obviously our guys our crew our crew leaders and and uh the guys out there on you know the boots on the ground obviously they they really would prefer not to be working outside in in five degree weather and you know and on the converse they'd prefer not to be working outside in 100 degree weather so mm. uh, so, so definitely, you know, trying to accommodate uh, when and where they work, you know, more more so than just the precipitation, but the you know the the outside temperature. Some, you know, we do we do some inside work when it comes to some retrofit <clears throat> uh, retrofit deals, but that's maybe a third of our business. The other two thirds, it's a lot of. I mean, it's all new construction, so they're, I mean, they're they're out in the cold, out in the out in the elements. So mm. now what attracted you to this business, to the model that you guys operate? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> as I looked at and just uh, for for reference, Chayton, I own a, a number of other uh, businesses, mostly construction focused. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as I as I evaluate any business, uh, to, you know, for sale, um, there's a there's a number of elements that that come into play. One, uh, the numbers need to make sense, uh, which I mean that's the easier part. But then, but then mo most importantly, it's evaluating the the people because essentially, you know, anybody can go out and buy you know buy some skid steers and 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 the drive heads and and things like that. Uh, what 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 we're paying for, what we acquire is the group of the group of employees that come with the business mm. and so it's all about evaluating and understanding uh the the, the team and, and ensuring that that we can set them up for success going forward right yeah when you set them up for success they set you up for success everyone flourishes yes. how do you um 
in this in this instance, did you acquire the business? It was already running Correct. Not from the ground up. Okay, got it. Can you maybe give us some insights for the audience who, let's say they have one location, let's say they're focused specifically in, let's say, Anaheim, California. How would they go looking about, in your instance, maybe uh, acquiring, let's say, in Los Angeles, California? You mentioned the numbers. There's got to be a good group, good team. How else could a, a foundation waterproofing company think of acquisition if they're in that world? Yeah, the the, it, the the good thing about it is I think I think we're easy to find if you're if you're in the the space uh, you can figure out who is doing the work in in those locations uh, just through some I mean whether it's Google searching and and then reaching out to to the owners to understand if 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 they're for sale if they're looking to sell or and and vice versa if you're if you're a business that's thinking hey i'd like to get i'd like to get out or i'd like to understand what uh you know what my business is worth um there's a lot of things that go into play and and can can take can sometimes takes years um and a lot of it is cleaning up of the financials you know ensuring <laughs> that you've got accurate year over year data and and, and making sure that you're tracking you know, as a business owner, you know, what you might be uh, putting through for expenses that might be more related to you personally versus um, actual expenses uh, to run the run the business. Uh, so mm. so there's a lot of a lot of that that definitely goes into uh, goes into play. But but on top of that, um, you know, the other important thing that that I look at because I um with any acquisition that i look at i want to ensure that the the there's a solid core management team uh that's that's in place uh to where uh the business can run without the previous owner being involved mm, so, so okay. you you almost have to it's it can be a little scary but you almost have, you have to do the best that you can to kind of work yourself out of a job if you are looking to sell a business you know acquisition the other way uh you know can be a little different but but typically that owner may be the gm of this second you know second location that you might be looking to uh, uh to acquire well you've, you've got to figure out okay if 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 that owner exits who's who's stepping into that that position is it you uh, as as the owner or uh, or is there or is there a right hand person uh, from that uh, from that uh, acquisition that that can that can step up mm, okay awesome and i guess in that example while we're talking about it you're able to work without offices all throughout the country it's my understanding you guys can kind of have the central focus remotely operate really really effectively so in that example maybe instead of them being in Anaheim and saying, we got to purchase an existing business in LA, how could they be more of your model where they could say, we're great in Anaheim, let's just expand territory to LA. Yep. Um, now, well, I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you, I mean, our, our space is different. We're working purely on the commercial side of things. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, the way we market, the way we, I mean, compared to a residential, a local residential company, uh, you're, you're marketing to to you know households versus right. marketing to uh the general we're getting we're, we're attempting to get in front of the general contractors we're trying to get on bid lists and 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 there obviously is, is a much longer sales cycle and that side of things but when i when i originally acquired the business uh we had two locations omaha and kansas city and and we again we were just serving the four state area uh, we've since moved to being a lot more mobile, um, still still having just the two locations, um, but being able to mobilize. Uh, we we've we've moved away from the freight liners that we have, um, you know, and, and with with heavy over the road machinery and 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 hauling all of our equipment uh, out to locations. To we're 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 buying lighter weight uh, flatbed trucks. Uh, you know, a light, you know, the, the lightest weight trailer that we can. And uh, mm. we're, we're loading up our, our, you know, our drive heads um, and we're drop shipping all of the materials we need. We're renting the skid steer or other equipment that we need and, and trying to be as, uh, as efficient as we can with just having, uh, you know, having our, having the job site uh, ready and, and 
with all of our materials and equipment and 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 machi machinery rented it's there it's there when whenever we we arrive in the middle of nowhere arizona as a <laughs> so that's awesome okay so two things we could touch on that are real fun is how important and how do you operate rationalize two things sales and marketing so we could touch on sales real quickly um how have you seen i notice you have you know people in business development and things how do you guys operate that and how important is that in your business um it's 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 crucial uh from a from a from a sales perspective again going back to the acquisition uh, when we originally acquired the the company uh we had two two sales people one in omaha uh one in kansas um since then we've added an individual out of st louis um one in oklahoma city and two out of the houston area as well okay. so so um our sales and we continue to look for uh for additional sales sales people uh to to help expand uh our reach uh we'd love to find someone close you know more in the south the southeast side of the the space and 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 really my from my perspective we we have hired all experienced hires so they're all coming mm -hmm. in with you know 10 20 30 years of experience in the foundation space they've they they they've seen it all from a commercial perspective so uh, mm -hmm. me coming in to this space with with zero experience in that, you know, in 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 the deep foundation space, um, I need to hire uh, experienced guys that know what they're doing because I certainly can't train them in 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 the space. So finding the right people, empowering them uh, to <clears throat> to to win uh, the the bids that they that they that they go after. That's that's been my focus. Um, our guys are very good. Again, you know, when they when they've got twenty plus years of experience, they certainly have a a, a network of individuals and, and contractors that they worked with in the past, and they're 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 working to get us on those bid lists. In addition to that, there's there's certainly uh, uh, paid uh, you know paid sites that that I know that they're they're leveraging to to uh, be made aware of jobs that might be out on the streets. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I think Dell Tech has a has a few different uh, different spaces where they're tracking a lot of the jobs uh, nationwide uh, from a commercial perspective that they're that they're hearing about and and just contacting to 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 get to, to get a bid to them. Okay, and the marketing side of things, I'd love to know. Um, obviously, your sales okay. team, your sales force, our marketers as well as sales. Is there anything that you guys are doing on the marketing side pretty consistently or things that you thought, oh, we'll give it a shot, didn't work out well? We're, we're definitely ramping up more of that. I, I, I mean, they're, they're getting involved in uh, a lot of, I mean, again, with our guys being spread out a little bit, they're certainly getting involved in different organizations and going to, uh, going to the uh, sh different shows where we we have a booth and and can can talk talk to uh general contractors that may need our help in in certain certain jobs uh they're also so the focus is not just on the general contractor side but but we're getting in front of uh geotechnical engineering firms whenever possible as well so offering mm -hmm. up Oftentimes, we'll, we're we're heading out uh, to to um, these engineering firms, and and we offer up uh, somewhat of a uh, of a lunch and learn to to explain cool. to them, explain explain to these geotechnical engineers uh, what what types of services we provide and where uh, where uh, uh, you know helical piles may come in handy or or grouted micro piles may may be a, a um may be an option or better option or a cheaper option than than some of the other uh options that they're that they may be looking at or evaluating so cool outside of that i mean <clears throat> we're we're we are just getting around to to investment in in uh <clears throat> you know seo and some of you know some of the some of the more the online stuff to make sure that if people are if a contractor is is googling you know 
grouted micropiles or low density cellular concrete uh, that our name may pop, pop up. Um, but uh, but that's that's a slow burn and and we're just we're playing around with that as as we speak. Cool. Awesome. Love that. Yeah, it makes sense. A lot of it sounds like it's very boots on the ground, hand to hand combat, but also that okay. digital aspect. I, uh, I had to talk with someone just yesterday and they were mentioning kind of, you know, when you have boots on the ground, hand to hand, it's first impression. And the second impression is the online space. So that's great that you guys are, are focusing on the primary, but also looking at that secondary. Very, very interesting. Um, with your accounting wisdom and, and, you know, business acquisitions, your skills there, what are some things that maybe people should prioritize better financially in the business and some things that people maybe overlook? Yeah, I, um, obvious. I mean, in our space, there's, there is definitely a lot of ebb and flow and, and, uh, uh, there when i first came in i i noticed that a lot of a lot of our competition in fact the the business that i acquired what wasn't even asking for deposits of any sort and so i i found mm -hmm. that deposits are a big help and then in addition to that um asking for, you know basically stating in in the proposals that i mean once material is procured uh, they pay for that as well. So if a job does get pushed back a month or two, at least the, at least we're not sitting on uh, on on the materials that we've had to pay for um, and and have to pay interest on, you know, through a line of credit or whatever the case may be. Where where uh, we've got our our customer uh, having paid for it. Um, so 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 it starts with it starts with the the proposal and ensuring that that we're requesting money as early and often as we possibly can. Uh, I, I found that that is, uh, that's mission critical there. Um, you know, outside of that, it, it really, I mean, it is all about making sure, making sure that you're not spending every dollar that, that comes in the door. Uh, you've got to keep some, keep some uh, powder dry, if you will, uh, for, for those, for those crunch times. I mean, as a business owner, there's that, you know, there aren't many business owners that that haven't worried about oh gosh how am i going to make payroll you know mm. whatever the case is so so making sure that you've always got uh got some money uh free and available uh so that so that you can sleep well at night yeah it's nice to go all in yeah and there's so many gurus and people like that out there it's all in you know if you got a hundred thousand dollars that's nothing you know, like you might as well use it to grow the business. And it's like, wait, 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 like I hear that to an extent, <laughs> but like there is payroll, there is cost of goods. There is, you know, all these different things, these efforts that you guys have. Um, so that's pretty, pretty reasonable. Set aside some money. You're going all in anyway by being a business owner. It doesn't mean you got to put all the chips on the table, right? You're already in the casino. <laughs> this casino, it's uh, business ownership. It, 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 I don't know. I think sometimes the casino has better odds. Just being around the clients that we've been around, we've seen them go through acquisitions. We've seen them, you know, come and go. And especially with the modern age, how is that affecting your business? Because, you know, obviously what you guys do has been around for a long time. Are you seeing that technology and, and the internet or, or anything I don't want to say artificial intelligence is necessarily anything super relevant for you guys, but um, how do you see the current world in your business and how the future is going to possibly shape it? Yeah. Um, it, it's hard to say. I would tell you that, I mean, when we, when we talk about AI and some of those things, uh, it, that has cert certainly been helpful and we've been able to utilize it in terms of, you know, adding in maybe some more legal verbiage into our proposals before we send out cool. um, okay. and, and leveraging, leveraging that in terms of, I mean, just other general legal documents that we may just need from a business perspective. The um, outside of that, we're definitely leveraging that in, in to create job descriptions and things like that and, and, or, or advertisements when we need to hire someone um, using a utilizing AI has, has helped with a lot of, in a lot of those, those areas, um, with regard to, uh, 
with regard to other changes from a from a technological perspective i you know you mentioned i mean the the hand to hand combat i don't know i don't know that in the next in the next for the foreseeable future in the next 10 20 years i don't know that we'll ever be able to just completely get away with that there's always going to need to be that human interaction and that relationship mm. building to 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 get uh get these contractors to to trust us and want to work with us and and um i you know this the the you know the salesman of yesterday uh will still is still going to be uh, a crucial component to every business going forward i just i we we won't we won't get away from that mm, yeah no i agree and especially with yours being very business to business um commercial it certainly is about relationships a little bit more than like the residential aspect where it's, you know, you have one particular resident, odds are there's not going to be residual or referral deals through them. Yes. Maybe, you know, definitely a possibility. Is that something you guys see quite a lot of in your business? Is there a lot of, um, I guess, repeat business through those relationships that you guys gather? Um, more or less, yes. There's a, there's a number of general contractors that continue to utilize us or ask us to bid um they'll they they contact us now now that you know day one for anybody that's getting into commercial you know uh deep foundation systems they're those that's not going to happen they're not going to be just getting the calls uh it it comes it comes through years and the good thing is, i mean the business that i acquired had been around for 20 plus years so we were we're definitely we were getting the we're, we continue to get the calls locally in omaha and kansas city but um mm -hmm. but are we getting those calls in st louis or or other locations no not until our sales guys are going out there and getting our name out there uh so that so that the repeat business does continue to come um was there anything else that you guys wanted to share or, or let people know about the business and then we can kind of let everyone know how to reach out to you guys yeah, uh, I, I mean, we do continue to grow and expand, and we are we are continuing to to uh, uh, look at adding additional sales project managers, um, and and we're looking we we are we're constantly looking for uh, crew foremen. Um, our our business model is changing a little, you know, with us moving from coast to coast, we're now we're now pivoting and looking at. Rather than hiring, you know, the, the typical ditch diggers that can just help with with some of that stuff, we are we are hiring high level crew leaders or foremen, if you will, uh, that are willing to travel coast to coast, you know, eighty you know eighty plus percent of the time, and then we hire and then we we leverage uh, temp labor uh, at the location that we that we get to. So. Okay. Um, uh, th those, I, I mean, we, we're continuing to expand and grow, and, and the business is coming uh, coming to us quicker than than uh, than we can handle. So definitely, uh, good. Continuing, continuing to add to staff, uh, both on the operational side as well as the the the, the sales side of things. That's cool. It's a quality problem. <laughs> yes. yep. Problem everyone wants. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Um, well, great. If you want to share how people could reach out to you or, or maybe who's ideal to reach out to you and how they can do that to contact your team, feel free to let them know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely. Uh, uh, email is probably going to be best. Uh, it's Josh, uh, J-O-S-H at geosupport.us. It's G-E-O-S-U-P-P-O-R-T dot U-S. Okay, awesome. And who should be... I know you've kind of referenced it before, but who's the ideal person to reach out to you guys? What what are they looking to accomplish? What's their title? Yeah, I mean anybody that has an interest in in uh, or 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 maybe intrigued by uh, what we do and and uh, um, maybe looking to make a move um, again, sales, project management, uh, or or you're hey, I I want to I want to be a crew leader. I want to be that foreman. Uh, and I'm willing to willing to. Tr I want to see. I want to see the U.S. Uh, from yeah, and get paid so, while doing it. And get paid while while doing it. We'll 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 set you up in your own hotel room every night and uh, uh, get it get to explore. Uh, you know, all four corners of the U.S. So awesome. 
Cool. All right. Well, we're going to sign off. Josh, you and I are going to hang out on the podcast, but uh, we are signing off, guys. Thank you for hearing out this episode and look forward to catching you guys on the next episode. Thanks, everyone. See you guys. Thanks for joining us today for another revealing episode of Foundation Repair Marketing Secrets. Don't forget to subscribe so you can keep discovering the tools, tactics, and techniques to ensure your online presence is as solid as the foundations you repair. Keep digging deep, and we'll see you in the next episode.